Hi, I'm Elle, Elle Garrity. I'm a communication consultant from Sydney, specialising in helping medium to large businesses communicate better. Government, museums and galleries, industry groups, for profit sector, all of them really. But more importantly, you are someone who wants to communicate better, who wants to be understood better, who wants to understand better, and who wants all this quickly and in a way that feels good. You spend too much time in meetings and you don't see the value in them. And you communicate within complex and rich knowledge spaces. And video meetings are driving you crazy right now. So let me set the cat among the pigeons. I reckon our increased reliance on video meetings because of the pandemic has shone a light on a problem that's actually not new. And that problem is most meetings are designed poorly or not at all, without acknowledging key elements of how human beings communicate and collaborate. I'm not one of those people who hate meetings because I don't attend them. I meet up with other people in working sessions, briefings or workshops where I know what I need to achieve and then I achieve it. And I use the right technology for the job. I don't let technology drive the agenda of my communication because tech is an enabler. It's not the central figure in my approach to communication. It's not the sexy be all and end all. It's just a way to get stuff done. When I write stuff in my notepad, I'm using technology. It's paper and pens. When I listen to the radio, I'm using technology. When I send my colleague an email, I'm using technology. When I share a PowerPoint slide, I'm using technology. And when I text my loved one, I'm using technology. What's really important in these scenarios is what I write in my notepad. The music I hear on the radio, the tone I take with my colleague, the story I tell with my PowerPoint slides, and the love I share with my family. The technology is just the channel, it's not what matters. So what does matter? Firstly, the people you are communicating with. Who are they? What do they care about? What are they trying to achieve? What communication styles do they prefer? And secondly, what are you trying to understand or convey? And what is your preferred communication style? And both these things exist in the sometimes muddy and sometimes electric world of human dynamics. You've got to consider what mood is the person you're talking to in? How interested are they in what you're talking about? What's the context? What distractions are there? How much competition is there for your attention? How expert is the person you're talking to? How expert are you? How senior are they? What's their culture? What's your culture? What's the business culture? And do you like each other? An understanding of these things will help you be a much better communicator. The cold hard truth is that no matter what tech you use, great communication is hard. It was always a myth that great communication happened around the water cooler, spontaneously with no preparation. Don't let video conference fatigue force you to buy into that myth. You need to do a huge amount of preparation to create amazing communication. You need to frame and refine your questions and ideas. You need to consider who is best to communicate with. You need to decide when to communicate, how often and for how long. You need to decide on the level of complexity to work at. And you need to prepare graphs, data cubes, videos, diagrams, the list goes on beforehand so that you can refine your message. So in conclusion, when it comes to communication tech, like paper and pens, radio waves and the internet, we have a tendency to let those channels dominate 
and determine the way we communicate. But it really should be the other way around. Who are you talking to? What do they care about? And what do you need to convey? The mechanism you use to communicate will always be secondary to those things. So what do you think? Too controversial or spot on? I'd love to hear your thoughts.